Hi. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, thank you everyone for joining and uh, thank you, Lisa, for being the first artist from our virtual residency project who was ready to go live and uh, to meet all of our audience in person. Yeah, thank uh, you. I will uh, just say a couple of words about the project and how we got to where we are. So uh, the St. Petersburg Art Residency uh, has been functioning now for um, almost eight years and it's been a very successful project, but we were absolutely not prepared to face the crisis that's going on now. I think no one was actually fully prepared. Um, and first we were kind of frustrated because our residency artists could not arrive to St. Petersburg in uh, mid-March, Russia closed the borders. Uh, and then we thought, okay, how we can actually have a residency program running without artists being able to travel to St. Petersburg. Um, and we came up with this idea of having a virtual studio and you can uh, access it through the link uh, in our account uh, and just gave it a shot. And uh, it's been functioning for a month now and uh, a lot of artists joined. I think we now have over uh, 50 artists who have a profile and many of them are also really active. Uh, as you, Lisa. So my first question is, uh, how did you find out about the virtual residency and uh, why did you decide to join the project? Yeah, hi. So thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me for this live stream. And yeah, I found out about the residency actually also through Instagram because uh, my colleague Anastasia Prahov is also a part of your residency and he just made a repost on Instagram and I also decided to have a try to join the platform yeah and mm -hmm. and uh, you're now in Germany right yeah I'm in my flat in Hamburg yeah and I also wanted to say to all of you that I hope you're all safe and well during all this time that you are in touch yes. with your family <laughs> with your friends that you have lots of tasty food at home that you have lots of great films to watch yeah and that you are having great time during the isolation and not stress too much about all these things yeah, and I am in Hamburg, and the things here are going quite well, actually, now. And I'm very happy that Germany is doing, like, a good uh, business with Corona. And, uh, yeah, we already have only 19 cases yesterday. So, and we are allowed to go out, and some shops are starting to open. So, yeah, the life coming back to normal slowly. <laughs> I also heard uh, that a lot of galleries are now open or uh, will be opened uh, during the next couple of weeks. Is that the case? Yeah, I've heard that uh, they will be open by appointment. So, mm. they, of course, they will not let a lot of people in straight away, but you can just sign, write them an email or, I don't know, the procedure, but you will, it will be possible to join the show. This kind of gives us all hope. <laughs> so things uh, in Russia are now have now been escalating for a while, but I really hope that um, it's going to go down and that we will be able to flatten the curve. And um, actually, a lot of people are taking uh, this self isolation and uh, the all the limitations proposed by the government very serious. So uh, I hope it will work. <laughs> um, but anyway, could you first tell us a little bit about your background? Because uh, I, I suppose many of uh, the people watching now went through your posts on the virtual SPA webpage or visited your profile. Uh, but it would be great to um, uh, get to know a little bit about uh, your path from where you started and to where you are now. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe I will start from the back. So now I'm in Hamburg in Germany where I'm studying in the University of Arts. And I moved here uh, half a year ago and I used to live in Moscow before and I grown up in Moscow. I was born in Moscow. And yeah, so I think I started uh, being interested in art quite early. Uh, and my parents, they brought me to the art school when I was like really young. Uh, and yeah, and just I started to do something into arts and the kind of my path brought me into the first art university it was in moscow also it was british high school of art and design mm -hmm. and i was studying yeah i was studying there for three years and then i decided to move to germany to yeah 
now I'm here. <laughs> it's like if you sum it shortly. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose uh, Germany and uh, Hamburg in particular? Is it uh, because of the art school? Is it the city that you like or what is it? Uh, I think it's, it's a combination of different things. So first of all, I just I wanted to move to Europe. Because I think for the professional development, it's really great to be here because you straight away have lots of connections that you have much more opportunities than you have in Russia. And again, Germany, I, I think, is also a very great country because they really help young artists to build their careers. Like, for example, now during the virus, they, uh, the government uh, gave a lot of money for young professionals to support them during the crisis. And they do have a lot of other different programs which can help you in the very beginning of your career. And in Hamburg here, I also like the city a lot because it's a big port and you have water just next to your house. That's really great. Of course, you can't swim there. It's not really warm, but you still have all the ships and you have the people who are working on the sea. And it'll, yeah, it's a really nice atmosphere. I would say it's quite similar to St. Petersburg in a way because of the weather, all this um, yeah, water around. Yeah, I like the city a lot. Uh, I should report that uh, it's been an amazing day today and uh, we had a lot of sunshine in St. Petersburg, which is quite unusual because just a couple of years ago, uh, I woke up to see that the everything is covered in snow uh, and it was <laughs> very disappointing. But uh, now things are starting to get back to normal, I hope. Um, and your work is very much connected to this urban scape and to being in the city, to those little elements that you capture from what you see. Uh, how, did, uh, how did it go? Was it um, your art searching for uh, inspiration in the urban space or was it the urban space that influenced your art and uh, how how did you come and maybe it, it, you have this I think you have a sketchbook on your desk yeah, that you I showed me during our test so uh, maybe you can show us a couple of images on what you've been working recently yeah sure so answering your first question I guess um, as I'm in the very beginning of my professional career as an artist. So I'm trying not to really be fixed to one particular path. I'm, uh, I'm trying to explore different things. And uh, of course, I was starting just by the surrounding I had, particularly in Moscow. So I was, I was really inspired by all the urban landscape and the architecture, and it influenced mm. my works a lot. And yeah, I'm just trying to... I really enjoy street photography and I'm going a lot for walks and I take pictures just with my phone and then I use these pictures for further translations into different media like for example mm. I did even projects with sound I did some installations now last year I do a lot of painting and so I'm trying not to limit myself with this and yeah of course Hamburg also changed my way of looking at things a lot because of course you have different surroundings you have different architecture because European uh, style of buildings is quite different from the ones you can see in Moscow yeah and uh, yeah starting with the sketchbook it's the series actually which I'm uh, sharing with you on your spa residency and uh, it's, it's like quite small it's a horse oh, five size mm -hmm. yeah It's a and... little bit. Uh, it's a little bit unusual because uh, when I first saw your uh, your works, uh, I had a feeling that they were very monumental. And mm -hmm. uh, I think I asked you about the size because it was just you. You looked at it, but you couldn't really say is it a large scale painting, uh, two and a half meters high, or is it a tiny sketch? So uh, independent from the size, they give you this uh, large scale feeling. I think maybe because of how you work with the color. Maybe, I don't know, but uh, probably uh, our, all our viewers are excited to look into your sketchbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so I started to do quite uh, small drawings, first of all, because I didn't have an access to my studio anymore. And I couldn't uh, follow my plans of doing large scale canvases. And I was stuck in my room, which is quite small. So I just decided to get used, uh, get some inspiration out of it. And I started to work in the sketchbook. And yeah, I will just go through some pages and maybe I will talk more about the project. Uh, 
So this is actually the first page which I didn't post anywhere. So this is a very, yeah, 100% unique material you can see now uh, on our live stream. And yes, yeah, so first of all, I started working with drawing materials. And this is one architect part of the architecture which I found here in Hamburg. And but then I realized that it's better to work with paint and I continued working in this series with acrylic and gouache. Uh, yes, yeah, so all these uh, drawings, they are based on the my found photographs uh, that I started uh, going through my archive of photos and see what can I find there interesting because I can't go out. Well, now I can, but before I couldn't. And yeah, I was just working with the materials I can find on my computer. So this is a view from my uh, window in my previous apartment. Uh, yeah, what just... what uh, what uh, years are we talking about when you uh, when you mentioned photo archive? Is it um, are these materials you've been collecting for several years, or some recent photos, or a mixture? Uh, I would say that they are not older than two years, and mm. they all have different locations. So, for example, this is in Hamburg. This is, I guess, in Berlin, or. But they are not older than two years, and they just an archive of my photos from yeah from the phone. Mm. Yeah, this one, for example, it's in Moscow. So mm. I'm very interesting in some very strange, unusual compositions I can find on the streets, and yeah, I'm trying to work on the edge of figurative and abstract compositions. So I like the feeling that you can find something similar that you can guess what it is, but you can't really understand what it is, you know? So this balance between unknown and the common, uh, very common situations you can find. Oh, I saw the drawing in your last post. Yeah, so uh. yeah, this is actually in Berlin. And mm -hmm. uh, I also like the fact that sometimes I don't even know myself what these things are. Like I just found these compositions of subjects on the street when I was walking by and I just like, how it looks like and I, I don't know what it is <laughs> so mm. I, I, I find it very exciting yeah but this is an interesting feeling when, when you see the image and uh, your mind kind of starts analyzing what you see uh, uncontrollably and um, then you think okay that might be a building or that might be um, this and that but then all of a sudden you understand no it's something completely different and the mm. uh, the, the form kind of keeps Sleep, slipping away. I think this is something that creates this tension when you look at the works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tension. I would also say that uh, I was receiving a lot of feedback from other artists participating in the residency and a lot of people with uh, saying about some calm feelings they can uh, have looking at my paintings. And I also like that maybe uh, by the colors or by the compositions, people also can perceive some uh, emotions which will help them during the quarantine which I find very like great mm. I'm really happy that people are writing about this uh, so how uh, did the quarantine that is now over in Germany or almost over but um, now looking back at the last um, six weeks eight weeks I can't even say how how long we've been <laughs> in shutdown it feels like forever but looking back at this time um, how do you feel it influenced your work? Did it influence your work? Did it change something? Will those changes last? Mm. I think, uh, well, the first thing which was kind of interrupting my process is that I didn't have an access to my studio and I didn't, I couldn't actually follow my initial plan of working with large scale images. And, but at the same time, it was very uh, useful for me because I finally opened all this archive because I didn't really have time to go through it for a long time and I had time to think to, like to sit and think what I want to do with with these photographs what I really want to do further in my practice and it was really useful just because I had finally had this time to actually have some rest and to think about this and also I think it's a great time to go through the all your texts because as an artist, you always write like a lot of uh, artist statements or biographies or some supporting materials which go along with the artwork. And I also spend a lot of time doing this. And of course, it's I think it's a good part of the quarantine. <laughs> mm. 
Yes. Uh, well, c can you also show us a little bit around your working space? Like how, how did you manage to organize uh, the area or maybe show us uh, a view from your window? Uh, yeah, sure. I guess I can do it. Um, if I will find out how to switch the camera. Yeah, great. Uh, so, yeah, so this is my working space. It's not so big as I said, so I just have enough space to work with my sketchbook. So I have some references here on the wall and yeah, I have some plans. Uh, yeah, this is the view from my window. I'm living at the very first floor, which is actually like a ground floor. So I have like all the feet of the people. That's that a perfect observation <laughs> point. <laughs> If you're interested in uh, researching life in the city, this is a point from where you can really see it very closely. Yeah, that's, I mean, I really like this apartment and I was very lucky to get it because it's quite, it's um, in very center of Hamburg in the part where like all the parties are and all the restaurants are and I can see like a lot of people going, passing by and yeah, I really like this area because a lot of things can be found here, especially for my uh, research as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually interested in finding out where uh, the people who tuned in come from. So uh, if you guys can just send a, a comment and write the city where you are right now, uh, that would be really great to get an idea of the geography. Because uh, we've also noticed that uh, some artists uh, found themselves locked down in different countries and in different cities uh, than their hometown and had to uh, adapt their work to these new conditions. Some of them were really harsh. Um, yeah. Uh, now when it seems that things are stabilizing, uh, do you have any plans for uh, for the next um, weeks, months? Uh, uh, very often I hear questions like, what is uh, the first thing you're going to do when you're allowed to go out? <laughs> <laughs> when you don't need to social distance anymore. Uh, do you have something in mind? Uh, yeah, I think the first thing I will actually do is meet all my friends because now we are in, here in Germany we are allowed meeting only with two people and you need to be to keep the distance of two meters that I will actually hug all my friends and I will meet my family. That's the first thing I will do uh, because of course it's like for me I feel a lot this lack of communication and yeah and then I will um, yeah, I think I will just go for a walk for my usual photo shoot to uh, see how the city changes because of this uh, absence of people through all these months. Yeah, and I think I will definitely, um, I want my studies in the university already continuing as in a way they should be in a physical way so we can all be in one room together in one studio with my colleagues because it's also a point that I don't have any professional close communication now. So I'm sitting here on my table and I'm doing my drawings, but no one can actually come to see them. And there in the studio, when you work with a lot, 10 different other artists, they all always can come to you and see your work and you can comment on their work. And it's also this um, dialogue which happens in this intimacy, which you can't actually have or by Skype or by Zoom as we are all doing now. Yeah, I miss this a lot. Uh, I see there is a question from uh, one of our listeners who is asking, uh, do you think that from this quarantine on your work will change? And what is your perspective on life, on way of being? I'm just reading the, the questions from the comment. Thank you for the question. So, yeah. uh, yes, what, what do you think? Yeah, thank you for the question. And also, if you guys have any questions, you just write it down here in the comments. Right, just feel free to post it anytime. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, my work, uh, yeah, it will definitely change. But by the fact that I had time to think about this and to build some strategies or maybe some plans which I want to explore in the future in my work. So, I mean, giving an example, I you know I decided to... First of all, I need to finish this sketchbook because I still have a lot of pages here. But then maybe I will bring it to larger canvases or as we discussed on the platform at SPAR, which you all can go online and search. We discussed that it might be interesting to maybe crop some compositions and bring them to larger scale or rotate them. So I also want to work with the idea of cropping. So maybe this uh, isolation just moved my work a bit further in terms of the development. Yeah, and personal perception, I think 
I just uh, realized that I sometimes need to spend some time for myself because I'm sometimes I'm working too hard that I don't really um, pay attention on uh, my feelings on my body that I need to sleep I need to eat and now I'm kind of a bit more relaxed and I know if I need to eat I will go to eat and I will not rush I will not stress too much so this time it yeah it was very productive also for me Uh, did you uh, somehow feel that your attitude or your relationship to art as an as work as uh, as a way of being changed during uh, this shutdown time when uh, you were left alone? Uh, did you feel like you worked more, or uh, did you just at some point maybe not really know, didn't really know what to start with, uh, or you were just working in the same way uh, as before? I think it really influenced my uh, just uh, the schedule of my day because I didn't uh, have to wake up by alarm anymore and I just woke up and I went to the kitchen, grabbed some coffee and came back to my room, which is also at the moment my studio and being all the day in the same space it's quite um it became quite annoying in the end so first you feel okay it's great i can sleep and faint in my bed or like eat there as well and then it's real uh, i start realizing that i don't like working and living in the same spot and uh i don't receive any other influence by the world itself so i'm just stuck in these four walls and of course i think of course it's influence because you don't uh have this fluency anymore so you can grab like a big brush and make like a huge painting because you are just afraid uh, just to uh, uh, have some paint on your wall you know because you live here and then <laughs> so i say i would say i feel this um yeah a bit stressed because of these walls yeah but now uh now the things are going better and we are allowed to go out and now it's already great time now it's fine <laughs> Uh, do you think that the academy, uh, the art school, will open up until the end of the semester? Or um, did you have any information on that? Yeah, uh, I think uh, now we have all the classes online and we are allowed to go to the studios just by two people in one room. So we need to have a timetable of people where to sign up to go to the to work there. But, uh, of course, it's also a question when all the workshops will be open because we have different, like, rooms with different uh, machines or different equipment with, which we can use for our practice, and they are closed. So this is actually quite a problem, and I don't know if they will open it during this semester. They said that maybe they will start some lectures in the end of the summer, and also only by 10 or 8 people in one room. So I'm not sure we will come back to the same working condition this semester maybe it will be only next year or well but I hope it will be soon <laughs> yes hopefully uh, I'm kind of interested how uh, you know how the the large-scale art events and all those um, public openings will look like after uh, we might have the new rules of social distancing for for good or for just a longer period of time uh, so maybe Actually, being in class and being in an exhibition physically will be a very uh, luxury and very unique experience that only a uh, few people can access, but I hope not. So we are now uh, really looking forward to uh, being allowed to open up and uh, uh, to welcoming new uh, residents at SPAR. Um, it's yet unclear when uh, we will be able to welcome anyone physically, but there are a lot of people um, knocking on the door of our virtual studio, which is great to see. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, being with us today. Uh, and uh, I w if you have any questions before we uh, finish, just post them in the comments. Uh, uh, for those who've tuned in a little bit later, we were talking with uh, Elisaveta Stapenka, who is uh, an artist uh, based in Hamburg. And you can see her works uh, at the virtual studio. Uh, and the link is in our bio. Uh, the interview series is uh, our way to meet those artists that we only know through the internet and through our virtual studio in person. Uh, and uh, we will be inviting more artists during the next weeks uh, and uh, uh, getting our community together. 
So thank you everyone for joining and uh, we wish you all a nice day. Yeah, thank you very much everyone and thank you Anastasia for inviting me. It was great. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Yeah, okay. See you. Bye-bye.